Good afternoon, Stefan Miller. Good afternoon. Managing Director for the Asia Pacific uh, Office of uh, Conergy Renewable Energy Singapore Private Limited. Thank you for this interview. It was also a, p a pleasure to have you here in our rooms, so welcome. Okay. Well, Stefan, let me start by asking you about Conergy. Not exactly a household name yet in Singapore, but you have got an important job to do here. So what does Conergy do? Yeah, I think uh, Conergy was founded now with uh, some pre-brands, let's say 10, 12 years ago now. So we are in the market since a while and we are quite strong in Europe. So our home market, Germany and then also Spain. So it was quite clear that uh, uh, a global brand like Conergy, they have to go to the emerging markets. Um, so what we did at the end in 2005, we decided to move to Asia Pacific. And, uh, wanted to move quite closer to our customers here. Um, in general, what we, are, what we are doing is we look into the international emerging markets here. And this is, for example, India, it's Australia, for sure China, but also smaller countries like South Korea uh, and also Indonesia, Malaysia. So, so the whole Southeast Asian area where we can implement renewable energy. And the main focus uh, on the Ecology brand is solar energy. Um, solar energy is, uh, has a very long history here in Southeast Asia, um, mainly because of, of a real need of electricity. And one option to produce electricity is to use uh, photovoltaic modules, which converts the solar energy into electricity. Now, about your company's business model, do you manufacture your own PV panels? Or, um, do, or do you integrate them? Um, and also you've got another company uh, that that sits under the Conergy Group, uh, Epurin. Correct. Tell us a bit about your business model and, and how that um, uh, is executed mm -hmm. uh, out in Asia. The Conergy started itself, um, I would say, as a pure integrator. Um, so we bought d different products from d different suppliers and we integrated them to a special need of the customers. And the customer can be very different. It can be, can be a private household, uh, where they want to have a small solar system for the roof. It can be also a big power plant for a utility. Uh, um, so we recognize then um, after a few years that it's uh, for sure better to be deeper in the value chain. Um, so we started to become a manufacturer, manufacturer of the structure, mounting systems, of the inverter, so all the electronic parts, and also of the, the modules. And then it was quite normal that you look into a business concept where you bring also the finance model into it. Most of our clients are really large investors and they invest into big power plants. And this can be a utility, an institutional investor, a bank, an investment fund. Um, and mainly these people are not so interested to know how a solar module really works. They are interested in internal rate of return. And there we recognized we have to set up um, a business structure with Epuron to speak the language of our customer. And this is really the banker's language. So Epuron is focusing on the investor's part, on the finance model. So they really speak about internal rate of return, about, uh, about these financial model questions. Um, the Conergy part uh, with two different business models. Uh, one is in the direction of uh, engineering and the other one is wholesale. We have also two different kinds of salespeople. One is really explaining in detail how a system works. This is mainly for the engineering part. And the other one, they are excellent in logistic and pricing and delivery and quality. Uh, and their focus may on, mainly on wholesale. So we try to be in the integration part, system integration part, in the financing of products and projects. And in addition to this, also the wholesale part. So we try to combine um, all the three under the Conergy Group. And this is also what we have here in Asia Pacific. You do your manufacturing in Germany or do you have um, plants in parts of Asia and other parts of the world? At the moment we have the manufacturing in Germany, uh, most of the models coming from there. But on the other hand we have uh, O&M partners in China, in US and in other countries of the world where we also have special types of modules. And for example, we have also a manufacturing unit in India where we are doing all the custom-made modules for, for special equipments. And this can be a triangle module for architectural design, but it can also be really a two-watt panel, which is the size of a hand, 
uh, for special solar lanterns or something like this. Mm, right. Interesting that you've mentioned internal rate of returns. So let's bring to the, the, the follow-up topic, which is grid parity. It uh, seems like a magic word these days uh, among people from the solar energy business. Yeah. Now, can you tell us a little bit more about what grid parity is and why this is an important development for mm -hmm. the industry? Um, let's describe it in a very simple way. Um, we have two different kinds of costs at the moment. And one is the cost for you as a consumer, how much you pay per kilowatt hour, per unit. This is partly comparable in US to Europe and India. It varies a bit, but at the end it's more or less the same. So this is the cost which, um, which appears uh, when you generate uh, electricity out of fossil fuel, for example, and plus the transmission cost ended up as, as, as the end customer price. Um, the other cost which we try to compare is the cost uh, which appears when we put a solar module into the sun. So the solar um, um, kilowatt hour um, for also for the end customer. So and, the, and here we can combine and here we can compare two of these costs. So one is the solar generated kilowatt hour cost and one is the fossil generated kilowatt hour cost for the end consumer. So and now you mentioned the word grid parity. This is the, the holy grail, how we call it. Um, the question is when the solar, solar uh, kilowatt hour cost will be cheaper than the normal kilowatt hour cost for the consumer. When this will happen, there are a lot of studies, assumptions. Um, if we see developed markets or developed countries like, for example, Singapore, but also Germany, Spain, um, then, there are, then there are assumptions about in 2011, 2012, a few progressive studies say earlier, a few conservative bit later, but somehow around 2012, 13, 15, um, this is where the solar energy makes more sense than normal kilowatt hour cost from the, your, your standard utility. Recently we were at the uh, forum at the Lee Kuan Yew School of um, Policy and one of the speakers mentioned that he uh, had installed the, the solar panels in his house mm -hmm. and every month he gets a small check from the the power company in Singapore. Mm -hmm. Would you say that he has achieved great parity yet? Or in which case, then I have to ask, you know, if he's getting some money from the system, is he actually uh, making economics out of his, mm -hmm. good economics out of his, his investment? Um, here in Singapore, not. Um, we, we have to face it very clearly. Um, the, um, there is a structure called feed-in tariff. This is where a normal consumer who has a solar module on his roof can feed in there kilowatt hour into the grid and then they get a special tariff. This tariff is at the moment, for example, in Germany twice or three times even than the normal kilowatt hour which you normally pay to utility. This is a funding and then for sure it makes sense. Um, here we do not have this. So the small amount of this person who gets a check is, is half of the kilowatt hour which he normally pays. So for him it's I would say it's a political statement and I think it's a very good step forward to bring the local utility here in Singapore a bit closer to what is solar and it doesn't harm the environment and it doesn't distort the, uh, the, the electricity quality. Um, so Singapore is not at the stage there that it makes sense to invest into solar.